This is Ken Roberts inviting you to listen to another adventure of Casey, crime photographer. Ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Our adventure for tonight, Thunderbolt. Night, a night of storm. A public garage in a neighborhood of deluxe apartment houses and stately city mansions. An expensive car is driven in as an alert attendant. Good evening, Dr. Foley. Ah, hardly a good evening, Jim. By the way, this thing will need a wash and polish before you put it away. I can see that, sir. Pretty bad weather out. It's filthy. I'll get a man to run you home, Doctor. Uh, don't bother. I'm dressed for rain and need exercise, so I'll walk as usual. Whatever you say, sir. No. Good night, Jim. Good night, Dr. Foley. Pardon me, huh? sir. Yes? May I trouble you for a match? Oh, certainly. Rotten weather, isn't it? Yes, pretty bad. Look, here's a book of matches. You can keep them. Sure you have others? Oh, yes. Good night. Excuse me. Aren't you Dr. Foley? Yes. Oh, I've seen papers in the medical journals. Uh, do you mind if I walk with you for a short distance? Well, if you wish. I shall consider it a privilege. Are you a physician yourself? No. It was once my ambition to become a great brain surgeon such as you are, but... Now I'm just a sort of jack-of-all-trades, which means, of course, that I'm what the world calls a failure. Well, success and failure are matters of viewpoint. Oh, how true. A man can be as he thinks. He can rise above misfortune and live in Valhalla with the gods. The thunder. To me, that is Thor, the mighty, wielding his hammer, forging his thunderbolts to strike the mountain giant's do I sound mad? Uh, well, you sound interesting, Mr. Uh... Thorson is my name, Doctor. Thorson? Yes. Oh, one of the street lights is out here. Makes things quite dark. Well, the storm probably knocked it out. Yes, a minor thunderbolt of the storm. The feeble precursor of a greater one. A deadly one. Deadly one? Forged by the hammer of the son of Thor. Here, what are you doing with that? Oh! I'm wielding the hammer, striking down the giants, killing you! For a son has cast his thunderbolt. The murdered man is Dr. Bernard Foley, Captain Logan? Yeah, the big brain surgeon, Miss Williams. Hey, Casey, will this killing make headlines? I'll say. The kind of headlines that'll be followed by editorial blasts against us cops. Well, that means you haven't got any leads, pal. Uh, all we've been able to learn so far is that Dr. Foley left his car in the Ardbore garage. And at a quarter after 11, a patrolman found his dead body sprawled across the sidewalk, as you can see it now. Mm. The spot must have been pretty dark before you cops got here with your flood lamps. I see that street light's out. Yeah, the storm knocked it out, I guess. Was Dr. Foley robbed, Captain? No, we found a wallet full of dough in his hip pocket, Miss Williams. Robbery wasn't the motive for his murder. How was he killed, then? Well, the M.E. thinks the job was done with a small tack hammer. What? A small tack hammer? Yeah, the double-headed kind of holster is used. Hey, well, Logan... That big playwright was killed last week, uh, Eli Whitlock. Yeah, his skull was crushed with a small hammer, and his body was found on a dark street near his home and on a night like this. I know. The similarity of the Whitlock murders naturally occurred to me. But Whitlock's killer was caught red-handed robbing the body, and he's now in jail. The guy you nabbed for that job admits he went through Whitlock's pockets, but he's consistently denied the killing, Logan. Well, I believed his story that he found Whitlock lying in that doorway and figured he was drunk. I haven't believed it, and I don't now. Mm -hmm. well, Logan, I, uh, I have a hunch that you're at the beginning of a very tough case. Calling out. Could I mistake our master's voice, Annie? Casey! 
Williams! We're on our way, Here we are, fella. All right, take over the desk till I come back. Now, you two come with me into the private office. Okay. Hey, why into the private office first? We'll soon find out. Close that door so we can have some quiet. All right. Now, you two covered the Foley murder last night. Yeah. And the Whitlock killing last week. You know we did. Casey, from the first, you believed the cops pulled in the wrong guy for Eli Whitlock's bump off. Yeah, and he was behind bars last night when Dr. Foley was killed. I so. think you had the right idea. Sit down. Now, I'm going to read you a special delivery letter that just came in. Listen to this. Dear sir, last week the much overrated playwright Eli Whitlock met death. Last night, the unduly acclaimed surgeon, Dr. Bernard Foley, met death in the same identical manner. I destroyed both of these frauds. Casey. Go on, Bert. Go ahead. And my thunderbolt shall soon destroy others. Thunderbolt? Shut up and get all of this. All right. The writer goes on. I concern myself only with the giants. Giants? Yes. But I shall slay other giants. On the next night of storm, another alleged giant shall die. Another? This time, a colossus of commerce shall meet his doom. A dealer in money, a seller of false security. Try to prevent his death, you will be powerless. That's all. No signature, of course. Hey, let me see that copy. Here, letter. Uh, hold it at the corner. All right. Uh, hand printed in block letters. You think it's on the level, Casey? Hmm. Your guess is as good as mine, kid. The writer's obviously a screwball. Well, if but... the letter isn't a gag, the screwball must believe he's Thor. Who? The ancient god of the Norsemen, Thor. The Thunderbolt. Don't you know anything about the classics, Casey? Thor, strongest of gods, a magic hammer. Yeah, I know, I know. It. Have you gotten in touch with the cops about this letter, Bert? If they get in touch with this paper when they get something hot, they can read about it in our next edition. Yeah, they'd be plenty sore if you hold out and something happens. And the letter says another big man will die. Sure. A dealer in money. A seller of false security. What does that tell you? The best protection for whoever it means is to read a copy of this letter in tomorrow's Express. Yeah, that's true. And, of course, the threat may be strictly phony. Yeah, and anyway, the threat's made for the next night at storm. Sure, and the weather report for tonight and tomorrow is clear and uh, mild. Bert. What? Look out the window. Huh? Rain. Hmm. I hope, Bert, that this letter is as phony as your weather forecast... Shall I serve you another drink before you leave, Mr. Clement? Uh, no, thanks, Terry. I've already had more than I... Pardon me, I should have, but tonight I was celebrating. Well, you, you have every reason to celebrate from what you told us fellas behind the bar here. That's right. I signed up another million-dollar policy, oh, Harry. Harry. Another million-dollar policy? I'm just what the fellows in my business say I am, the greatest life insurance salesman in the world. Oh, I, I believe that, Mr. Clement. I, I believe it. Mm, i go home now. Oh, I, I'll call the doorman and have him get a taxi for you. No, no, I want to walk. Need a walk. Do me good. Night, Henry. Uh, good night, Mr. Clement. Leaving, Mr. Clement. Yes, George. Thanks for opening the door for me. Uh. <sighs> yeah, feels good. Rain feels good. Pardon me, sir. Huh? May I trouble you for a match? Match? Oh, sure. Thank you. Aren't you Mr. Alan Clamert? Well, how'd you know? You were pointed out to me at the underwriters convention several months ago as the greatest life insurance salesman in the business. That's so. Do you mind if I walk along with you? Oh, come along. Glad to have your company, Mr. Thank you. And my name is Thorson. Casey, you and Miss Williams have a nerve showing yourselves here at headquarters today. 
If you read the newspapers, you must know a guy named Clamert was hammered to death last night. Yeah, we've heard about it, Lou. And I've heard that you two knew about the letter threatening his life. Captain. You and your smart city editor wouldn't tell us cops about it. Oh, no. We had to see it in print. Too late. Now, listen, pal. Don't pal me. Get out of this office I and said, don't... listen. Come, but... Now, what uh, would you have done if you had seen that letter? Would it have told you that a life insurance salesman was the intended victim and a particular life insurance salesman named Clamart? And oh, wouldn't I... you have been inclined, as we were, to dismiss that entire fantastic letter as a gag? Now, be reasonable, Captain Logan. Oh, I suppose you're right. Well, now all of us know the letter wasn't just a gag. Yeah. Burke's turned the original letter over to you with any fingerprints on it? Only yours and Mr. Burke's. Yeah, we expected that. With the same weapon used this time? Uh, attack hammer, the doc thinks. You know, Logan, there's a very obvious pattern of murder. Here. In its method, sure. Rainy nights, deserted streets, victims who habitually walk to their homes. All this crazy hammer swinger had to do was bust a street light on their route and wait for him in the dark. Yeah, our street light was out last night. Yeah, didn't? we figured it was much more than a coincidence this time, so we investigated and... Found a BB shot inside the broken globe. Oh, gun, huh? Or a slingshot. This killer isn't so crazy. He plans well in advance. But he is crazy. He clearly establishes his insanity by the absence of normal motive for his murders. Envy, Logan. Envy? Mm-hmm. Pushed to abnormal lengths by failure. You mean because the killer's a failure, he wants to do, destroy men who are successful? Well, to me, that seems to be his mania. Uh, you may be right in your theory, but it'd take my guys forever to check up on all the failures in town. Well, I'm not a cop. This thunderbolt screwball is your headache, Logan. Yeah, and you newspaper mugs will be handing me anything but aspirin. You make me out of dope because we pinched the wrong guy for the Whitlock job. And the public will never be told your city editor held out that letter on me. We cops didn't even have a chance. Ah, don't start that again, no. Why shouldn't I? When I think of it, I start to boil and it. Come in. Hello, Captain. Well, I'm glad to find you and Williams here, Casey. Well, if it isn't Mr. Burke, city editor. Yeah, the... uh, Burke, you're an unpopular guy around here, you know. Get out, boss, while the going's good. I don't want him to get out. I want your city editor to stay until I've told him exactly what I think of him. I Wait, think Captain, it can hold, hold everything. Come down here to make amends. With another Thunderbolt letter. Thunderbolt another letter? Thunderbolt. Came special delivery like the first. Give it to me. Yeah, what's it say? Ryder brags about keeping his promise last night and promises another murder when it rains again. Another? This time he's more explicit about his next victim. I think he means to kill a press photographer. What? Yes. A press photographer? You, Casey. Burke, you're kidding. Read that letter and see for yourself. He isn't kidding, Miss Williams. Oh. <laughs> Casey, what? this is just my headache. The second letter from that Thunderbolt nut says he's going to kill a, a press photographer, Miss Williams? It promises to kill Casey, Ethelbert. Hmm? It doesn't promise anything of that kind. Only you, Logan, and Bert claim to see the inference, Andy. All right, well, let's try it out on Ethelbert. I want to see Show you. him that photostatic copy of the letter, but don't you try to rib me now, pal. Here, Ethelbert, read this. Uh... Lincoln Photostat Company Incorporated. No, Ethelbert, down here. Oh. oh. Uh, the next to fall by my thunderbolt shall be a very little giant. <laughs> little giant. Shut up, Casey. Let him read. He can't. He practices press photography, a minor art. A minor art. Get that. He dabbles in a field other than his own crime detection in which they credit him with brilliance when the fool is merely lucky. Yeah, now that's something. The thunderbolt is forged and ready and will strike on the next night of storm. Hmm. Now, I ask you, Ethelbert, as a pal, can you find anything in that bunch of drivel that could possibly apply to me? Casey, now I'm worried about you. What? It, the guy practically draws your picture and writes your name under it. He means you. Photography department, Casey speaking. This is Ann Casey. 
Oh, yeah, I was just going to phone you, kid. Yeah, that case of sniffles you went home to nurse. Well, huh? I feel a little better. That's good. Casey, it's starting to rain and thunder. Yeah, well, now, so what? Now, look, I've been needled about that letter until I'm sick, too. That, that nut may hammer somebody to death tonight, but his threat was definitely not directed at me. Yet. Look, you'll walk blindly into any trap that he, le- he leads you to, and, and you don't know what he looks like. And he please. Okay, but will you promise me something? Huh? What? Well, can't you promise me before I tell you? I don't ask very much of you. Well, well all right, I, I promise. Look, drive directly to your apartment house when you finish working tonight. And leave your car parked in front of the door instead of going to the garage and walking the two blocks home. And uh, And then go upstairs and lock yourself I, in. Listen, Andy. Now, you promised, Casey. Yeah, I've promised. I'll phone you at 11.50. Now, be sure you're there. Uh, here's the old crate, Charlie. Put it away. Uh, want me to wash your car tonight, Mr. Casey? It'll be pretty spotty from this rain. Hmm. Who do you garage guys think I am? A millionaire? I bought a car wash from you a month ago. Hey, huh? <laughs> yeah, you're a hard man to make money out of, Mr. Casey. <laughs> Go ahead, Charlie. Clean her up. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. On second thought. Uh, huh? Look, do that cleanup job tomorrow night, will you? And if Miss Williams ever asks you if I left the car here tonight, you tell her no, huh? I ain't seen nothing of your car tonight, sir. Right. Thank you, pal. Thank you. All right, Charlie. I'm heading for home. Night, Mr. Casey. Pardon me, sir. Go on. May I trouble you for a match? Oh, I guess so, yeah. Miserable weather, isn't it? Yeah. He's stinking. Here's my lighter. Thank you. <sighs> Save. Aren't you, Mr. Casey, the famous crime photographer? Uh, Well, I don't know about the famous part, but I'm Casey. I thought so. You've been pointed out to me at police headquarters. What were you doing there? Well, nothing in the business way. I was paying a social call on a detective friend of mine, Sergeant McCloskey. Oh, you know him? I know McCloskey. Do you mind if I walk along with you? Why, no, no. I've long been one of your admirers, Mr. Casey. Huh? Little men like myself can't help but envy you giants. Giants? I borrowed the word from your paper's publication of those so-called thunderbolt letters. Interesting mystery, that. Yeah, yeah. What's, uh, what's your racket, Mr. Uh... Thorson is my name. Thorson? Thorson? I see. Uh-huh. Hmm. Street lights out just ahead of us. Dark stretch there. It is dark. And listen to that thunder. An inspiring phenomenon, thunder. Yes, I've I've heard that like full moonlight, it does things to some people. Yes, to those whom the gods make mad. To the wise people of ancient times, that which we call insanity was a god-given gift. Mr. Casey, it meant freedom. Yes, so I've read. We're coming into that dark stretch, Mr. Thorson. Yes, we are. Evening, Casey. What? It's me, Joe McCloskey. Oh, uh, this is an unexpected meeting, Sergeant. Why, yeah. Hello, Carl. You you know this guy, Sarge? Well, I oughta. Carl Thorson and I live in the same block for about, oh, about ten years. Hey, what are you doing so far from home, neighbor? I've been visiting friends, Sergeant. I'm walking to the bus stop. <laughs> you know, uh, Thorson here is a great fan of yours, Casey. He's always asking me questions about you. He... Oh, you... You know Mr. Thorson well, Sergeant. Well, so well that if he was anyone else, I'd be putting a pinch on him right now. <laughs> you know, uh, beat cops have been reporting all streetlights out of commission since that last Thunderbolt murder, Casey. And when Captain Logan heard one was out near your apartment, he sent my partner and me right up here on the jump. I'm glad to know that you policemen are so efficient, Sergeant. Well, you don't know the half of it, Carl. Ever since it started to rain this evening, Casey has been shadowed. Yeah? yeah. Mm-hmm. Come out of that doorway, you ducked into, Red. Everything's okay. Uh, 
Well, come on, Casey. I'll escort you to your apartment house, and then the other guys and me can get home. And you'll be entirely safe once you're home. I must hurry to catch my bus, Sergeant, so if you don't mind... No, no, no. Run along, Carl. Run along. I'll see you later. It's been a great privilege to meet you, Mr. Casey. Good night. Good night. <laughs> uh, he's a nice little guy, Thorson. <laughs> yeah, isn't he? Kept me from making an awful fool of myself, Sarge. And would that have handed your boss Logan a swell laugh? Huh. He had me tailed tonight. Well, the captain's been worried about you, Casey. Well, now, come on, I'll, uh, I'll walk you to your door. Knew that phone would be ringing. Did I unlock my door? Where's that light? Hello? Casey! Where have you been? I've been ringing you ever yeah, since... Okay, all right. I'm only a few minutes late now, Annie. I just got home, and look at it. It's seven minutes to twelve. Well, what delayed you? Oh, flock of cops that my pal Logan sent to nursemaid me. I suppose you put him up to it. No, he didn't give me the satisfaction of knowing he was having you guarded, but I'm glad to hear he did. You all right, Casey? Of course I'm all right. Now go on to bed and get over your sniffles and let me get some sleep. Casey, I'll never worry about you again as long as I live. Good night. Uh, Annie, uh... Worried. But he should have known that that letter couldn't have meant me. Very little, Giants. <laughs> now what? Hello? So you are safely home. You, Logan. McCluskey yeah. just radioed a report that all was well with you. I phoned to double check. Okay, now you've double checked, wise guy, and now you know that that screwball didn't have his hammer out for me. Goodbye. Nuts to all of you. Not to me, but... Thorson. Nice of you to leave your door open. It made things so easy. I'll close it now. What are you... Be very still. As you see, now I'm armed with a revolver as well as my hammer. As I see. Sergeant McCluskey and his fellow policemen made it impossible for me to stick to pattern, as he called it, but they went away, and I came back. Wasn't it fortunate that McCluskey is a neighbor of mine? He couldn't believe that the man he sees nearly every day is not the person that she thinks. You certainly threw me off a track. That doesn't matter. I shall keep my promise. Your promise? That you shall die tonight. Gods, unlike men, are bound by their promises. Yeah, I see. Well, of course, you know, you've got to finish me off by 12 o'clock. And I shall. Yeah, you've got almost five minutes, fella. Plenty of time. I'll watch the time. You're thinking, Mr. Casey, that when I approach you with my hammer, you'll seize it from me and my gun also. But I shall throw the hammer as my father Thor throws it. With the speed of lightning and unerring aim. Yeah, but you didn't kill those other guys by throwing your hammer. You held it in your hand and you hit them many times. There was a reason for that. Yeah, but a guy can neither throw a hammer or fire a gun with any accuracy in the dark. <laughs> You've smashed the lamp. Thorson, you shot your last thunderbolt. <laughs> now we'll turn on another light. Headquarters. Jimmy Homicide. Captain Logan. Just a minute. Homicide Bureau, Captain Logan. Captain Logan, this is Casey. Send some cops up to my apartment to collect the Thunderbolt killer. The Thunderbolt? Yeah, he's sleeping on my living room rug right now. He's even crazier than I figured he'd be, Logan. When you wrote that last letter, he was referring to me. <laughs> They took Thorson to the insane asylum, huh, Miss Williams? Yeah, he's safely tucked away in a padded cell. Mm, Ethelbert, what do you think of a man who's so eager to get his name into the obituary column that he disregards all warnings and even breaks the solemn promise exacted for his safety? Uh -oh, uh -oh. <clears throat> no, I'd say that guy was a suicidal lunatic, Miss Williams, and I know just who you mean. Suicidal lunatic. 
That's pretty good. <laughs> this is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.